Hey everybody, welcome back to my shop. And this week, we're going to turn this Emerging Goblin. But please remember, this is not an instructional video and is meant for entertainment purposes only. Your safety is your responsibility. Well, let's get started. So we're starting out with a piece of choke cherry, and it comes from the same tree that we used to make last week's project. So I'm pretty excited to see what the grain looks like inside. And I have a pretty good idea of how I want it to sit. I want this to be the base and then the goblet portion to be up in here. And I might even try to capture a little bit of bark in the goblet cup area. So when I put it between centers, I'm going to have to try to keep that all in mind. So let's get this on the lathe. Okay, so we have it securely held between centers. We've got the base towards the tailstock. So first order of business is I'm going to shape a tenon down here. And lucky enough, the piece isn't that far out of balance. So we can start up at about 1200 RPM. And I'm just going to use my half inch bowl gouge with the 4040 grind to get going. Let's get that tenon formed. I think I better put my mask on. Always remember to protect your lungs from the dust created by turning or sanding, especially when you're working with bark. You never know what kind of mold or fungal spores may be lurking inside and you don't need a lung infection. We now have it reversed and held firmly in the chuck by that tenon. Next thing we're going to do is form a cylinder where we want the goblet portion to be. So I'm just going to continue using the bowl gouge to rough this out. This dry hard piece of wood with all its limbs and bark and grain changing direction, it's pretty tough to rough out. And not only that, but the white paint I had used to seal up the ends a couple years ago, it really dulls my tools quick. It's almost like they must use a mineral rock or something to make it white. But anyways, it just means I have a lot of sharpening to do at the beginning of this project. Now we've got the cylinder mostly roughed out. Next thing we're going to do is just start the cup shape of the goblet so we know what to aim for when we're hollowing the inside. Now I don't know if we're going to be able to keep this bark but we'll have to just see as we turn. Just switching over to the spindle gouge. Unfortunately, we weren't really able to keep any of that bark, so we'll just keep shaping away and not worry about it anymore. Now that I didn't have to worry about including that little piece of bark anymore, I decided that, hey, maybe I'll try a different shape. Well, that's one of those decisions that actually ends up being a little more stressed than I anticipated, because another pleasing shape just was, was not emerging. So I just kept taking small cuts and taking my time, and I even took a little break, as you'll see, and eventually, I got it all figured out. Sometimes it's not really so much finding a pleasing shape as it is finding what's wrong with the shape you have. Need to stop for a bit, I'm losing this shape. Okay, that's enough for now. Let's move on to hollow. Hollow this out. I'm just going to start out with the spindle gouge. Standard procedure: just feed it in like a drill bit, and close that door off. Get a little bit of vibration. We can't go too fast with this; it's not quite in balance. So I better not take too big of cuts. So we close the tool off, 45 degrees, and pull out. Okay, this is going to be a tough turn, like usual, with this choke cherry. 
So again, in like a drill bit. See if I can turn the speed up a bit. I'm going to save you the headache and put you into high speed. I'm already halfway through hollowing this, but the vibrations are just killing me, so when in doubt, just drill it out. Always take really good care of your Forstner bits and clean them off really good before you put them away. The tannic acid and the dust and the moisture it might hold can actually make them rust and dull the edges prematurely. I'm just going to finish up hollowing with a round nose scraper. I had to deal with a lot of vibration while hollowing and that's because this piece is hanging about 10 inches out of the chuck on a 2 inch tenon and it's at low RPM due to the base being out of balance. So I took a lot of really light cuts followed by lots of shear scraping to clean up any tool marks caused by vibration. Inside of the cup is all done, there's no torn grain, so let's finish the shape of the outside and then we can sand just the cup portion first. Sure would be nice if I could turn the speed up a bit. Not bad. Whew. I'm just going to take one more light micro cut just to smooth out this shape just a bit. I don't want to take too much. Still getting a bit of vibration even at this low RPM. Sometimes that's as clean as I can get it, so the rest will be to the sandpaper. So I'm going to just make a little bead down here. I don't know, not too big. Yeah, I don't want it too thick. Still looks a little too big. Okay, now I'm going to sand just the cup portion. I usually like to sand it once I'm up to this bead, then I can sand the stem and the base separately. I'm just going to sand the cup portion off camera using 220, 320, and 400 grit sandpaper, and I'm going to use the long narrow strips again to make it easy to get inside and also to stretch out flat to contour and follow the details of the shapes. Let's form the stem and the foot.
Now I'm just trying to visualize how I can connect the log portion to the goblet so it most looks like it's actually emerging from it. I'm gonna have to think about it for a little bit. I can either go with a bit of a dome shape or I could concave it, but I'm actually maybe thinking of going a little wild here and making a really big rising action, almost like somebody pulled the goblet out of the log. But uh, that's a big risk, because if it doesn't turn out, it's going to be awkwardly high above the, <laughs> above the log, so... Huh. I'm cutting this spinning branch here and so it's actually side grain so I'm going to pull cut it for a little bit and then push cut in. Well, it's kind of like what you say, Phil. It's not the shape I imagined, but it's the shape I got. <laughs> hey, speaking of which, sounds like a good time to do a couple shout-outs. My first shout-out goes to Gary, a.k.a. The Papa 1947 He does beautiful segmented and other turning work, and this week he posted a video where he builds up a segmented bowl out of Paduk and then places it on his fourth access machine, which he actually built himself, to create an emerging image on the side of the bowl. Absolutely unbelievable. So please check the links in the description down below for that video and his channel. And my second shout out goes to, yes it's you Phil, over at Madrona Woodworks. He's got plenty of different project videos up, he posts very regularly at least once a week, and he's got a really good sense of humor. So please go check him out as well. Links will be down in the description below. A couple more good clean cuts and we'll head on to sanding. Okay, let's move on to sanding this piece. I'm just going to use the same finishing procedure I used on the last two project videos, which is multiple coats of this water-based wipe-on poly, scuffing up after each coat, and then I'm just going to top it off with some beeswaxed, beeswax thin 50-50 with mineral spirits. So I'm just going to apply a generous first coat, wiping off all the excess, making sure to get every little spot Let's see this grain kind of pop out. Yeah, that's, that's pretty wood. Another nice thing about this finish is that it won't really yellow over time. Regular polyurethane tends to yellow a little bit over the course of a couple months, which really, it's not that bad depending on your tastes. But if you're trying to preserve color as best you can, then it's probably better to try a water-based or a polycrylic, something like that. And I'll do the bark separately, because it's going to take a good amount. I need some paper towel. By the way, always be prepared before you start applying the finish. Always helps things to go a little smoother. There. Now I just gotta soak the bark down, then I'll let it dry for probably about an hour. Scuff it up with 600 sandpaper or some 4 hot steel wool, and then repeat that about three more times and do the beeswax. We built up three or four coats of the poly, so I'm just gonna scuff it up with some 4 hot steel wool, and then we can buff on some beeswax thinned with mineral spirits. Wipe off all the extra dust. Now we can buff on some thin beeswax. Just gonna 
apply it throughout the entire piece first and then we'll let it set up for a minute and then we'll crank the speed up just a little bit and buffer in. To part this off the lathe, I'm going to try a combination of my spindle gouge and a really sharp parting tool. Let's see how this goes. I don't have a lot of room to work in there, so I'm quite limited. I tried to cut straight in from the bark till I hit solid wood all the way around and then I'm undercutting the base. This is how I know it'll stay flat on the table. Okay, I'm checking out. I'm gonna use a saw to take the rest off. I'll just have a little nub on the bottom to sand off, but it beats risking having this thing go fly across the room after all the work we put in. <laughs> and there we go. Off camera, I'm just gonna clean up that nub, sand the bottom, put my name, the type of tree, the year, and then I'll throw some finish on, and this piece is done. Thanks for tuning into this week's video. Photos will be coming up at the end like usual. If you liked the video, please click the like button and share it around. If you have any questions or suggestions for me, please fire those off at the comments section down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'll have a new video out every Friday. So thank you very much and have yourself a great day.